welcome to a very, very exciting episode of Bayonne Today. As in the past, you know I always try to bring some interesting business owners to the set to tell us a little bit about what's happening in their business now and also a little bit about the past history of their business. This particular guest today is uh, a very interesting partner in the... Um, Joskowitz family business. This is Scott Joskowitz. I'd How like are you? Thank um, you for having me. You're welcome. I'd love to welcome you to Bayonne today. Thank you. We're not only talking about Bayonne today, though. We're going to be talking about the Bayonne of the past and mm -hmm. also what your plans are for the future for your business. Great. Okay. So your business is located over at 769 correct. Avenue A? That's correct. All righty. And if we do a timeline, mm -hmm. okay, from my research, I found out that your parents, Beverly and Jack, mm -hmm. opened up over there in 1958. Well, the way the story is goes, uh, my father had a butcher shop and a barbecue shop in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And uh, he had that from his father. Okay. And he was approached by Morty Moosen at the time, whose uncle and aunt owned it originally and it was a more of a superette and a little deli kind of thing and and that was a, a different block because it was a block with other businesses where most of the area is residential it wasn't commercial mm -hmm. so it was a very different kind of area and it was a nice part of town a lot of professionals lived in the area at the time mm -hmm. so he was approached by morty to give up the business he had in williamsburg and take a shot in this kind of big superette at the time. Now your dad was a butcher. He was a butcher by trade. A butcher by trade. By and trade. He, and he had a barbecue. Well it was you know was ribs and brisket and chickens and you know okay. it was that kind of food. Okay. So when Morty originally approached him he wasn't interested. He was doing well in Williamsburg and mm -hmm. you know he didn't want to come mm -hmm. and Morty approached him again. He said listen we get the business they'll hold the paper on it. Mm -hmm. We could take a shot and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out and whatever. So my father decided to give it a shot with Morty, okay. and he gave the business in, in Brooklyn to his brother. And he told his brother, if it doesn't work out here after a year or so, I'm going to come back and take it and, you know, give that up, and we'll see what happens. Okay, and your dad's brother's name was? Lou. Is? is no, was. passed away. Okay, Lou. okay. So. so my father was the youngest. So he came to Bayonne. Uh, they gave it a shot. There was a Zemzer dry cleaner. I don't know if anybody remembered. Uh, We're talking about that little strip yeah, right it on Avenue. Yeah, it was off of Newark Bay Court, between Newark Bay Court and 33rd Street. So it's okay. between 32nd and 33rd mm -hmm. on Avenue A. So tell me, because this is new to me. Right. So tell me what was there. There was a dry cleaner? There was a dry cleaner. There was a beautician, you know, uh, a salon there. Okay. Uh, there was residential. Over the years, there's been many things. There was upholsterers. There was dry cleaner. There's been a lot of things. So... Morty and Jack took it over mm -hmm. and were struggling really bad for the first two or three years. Really? And after, I think, year two, they wanted to sell it, but they were so down the hole okay. that they couldn't afford to sell it. Okay. So they worked through it and worked through it and, you know, put it up for sale, took it back, put it up for sale, and then things started turning around. Now, was there anything to explain what the turnaround point was? I think they was? just put a lot of hours in. Okay. They put a lot of hours. They put out a good product. You know, back in the day, uh, it's not like now where most of the time the meat comes in uh, cryovac So you'll get it portioned out or it'll come in a section of meat where before the whole uh, a quarter of a, a steer would come in. Okay. So my father would break it down. It would be a little sawdust on the floor and, and, that. and that kind of stuff. Okay. So I think it just, they got a good reputation in town. In the beginning, it was, a, it was like a convenience store and deli. So in that time, they did a lot of deliveries. So on Benmore Terrace and Roosevelt Terrace and those kind of areas, mm -hmm. it was a very professional crowd, a business owner's crowd. They were getting a lot of calls for that. They did a lot of uh, smoked fishes, you know, your lox, pastrami, whitefish, all that kind of stuff. That was all done on premises. To this day, everything is always done on premises. Everything that yes. you serve is, is done everything. on premises mm -hmm. right there on Avenue A. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. everything. Okay. So uh, they just got a good reputation in town and good service, and they were worked well together. They were popular in town. They did a lot of things around. So over the years, it just started turning and turning, and uh, as the years went by, they started getting more into the prepared food end of the business. Mm -hmm. So it was people were coming in. You know, they would have fresh cold cuts, fresh salads, everything is homemade. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day it was white fish salad and lox. And you know, now it's more seafood salad and shrimp salad and that exactly. kind of stuff. So um, the business was heading more into the, prepa the prepared foods kind of line. You know, I guess in the 80s especially, women when women, working. exactly, okay. women started working. Mm -hmm. So there was more of a need for, you know, the, w the women to be able to come at five o'clock, pick mm -hmm. up a couple of barbecue chickens and, mm -hmm. you know, coleslaw and soups and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that that's really when the turnaround started, mm -hmm. that they really got into catering more like it is today. Mm -hmm. That we, you know, back around 19, I guess, you know, the 70s and the early 80s were still that way. Yes. Where I never went into a supermarket until I was probably married. Wow. We had everything in the business that mm -hmm. we could get. You know, we had toiletries, we had sodas and dairy, that. we had all that. That I remember because I lived on West 32nd Street at the time. And I remember. Which is where I, I grew, we grew up on 32nd Street. Oh, oh, that's right. Between Avenue A and the Boulevard. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was A, between A and the Bay. And, oh, okay. Yeah, and I would send the kids over. Right. And I mean, anything you needed, right. you could find right there. Right. And I mean, truthfully, that really is probably the, that would have been it, the only, only place on the west side. Only place. Until the AMP opened up many, many years later. And now many. the AMP isn't there anymore. Right. But you, your family business has um, survived and mm -hmm. will say thrived. Yes, I would say so. From 1958 that's, until 2014. That's right. One of the things that I, I find really interesting is yesterday I was over at the um, at the store. It was your dad's 80th birthday. Correct. And your mom and and him were sitting at the table, and it was it was really lovely to reminiscent to sit there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean it's a very different atmosphere now right. than it was back then because back then you did have rows and rows Correct. of items in the store, and now it has kind of more. It's more of a casual feel, mm -hmm. but yet. It it's it reminded me of, of one of the cable shows that I see on now the talk the the, the food shows right. where you see the deli counter on one side and the tables are here and people were enjoying themselves right. and one of the things that has survived from all these years is your mom's brisket right. uh, recipe mm -hmm. which I said to her I said Bev tell me a little bit about any type of recipes you might have because I said. You know, it, I, we don't hear much about the history anymore. Correct. And she said, well, the Hadassah had a cookbook. Oh. And mm -hmm. she said, I took the recipe out of the Hadassah cookbook for the brisket. And she said, to this day, right. they still use that the same true. recipe. And she said, I don't remember what it was. Right. Because she said, I really wasn't the greatest cook. I handled the money. I was always at the register. Correct. But she said, that's where the brisket comes from. And today, you can go there and still taste the delicious brisket that they had Absolutely. back when they started. Absolutely. Um, one other thing she did tell me, mm -hmm. too, which I told you I'd let you know. I, was, I had a, a delicious uh, little dish of the rice pudding. It is definitely homemade rice pudding. Absolutely. And I said, Bev, was this your recipe? And she said, well, actually, this recipe came from Joe Kelb's grandfather. He had a little coffee shop or something, and he gave Marty Moosen yes. the recipe I for, did not know that. for the rice pudding. And she said, to this day, we still make that recipe. Absolutely. And he was married to um, one of the Hochstein girls. That's right. And now, I said, I happen to know Joe Kelb, which would be third generation, and I know Linda Hochstein, Absolutely. who is my, my attorney and friend. But the rice pudding came is back. What comes from way, way back in time? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's great. And it's incredible. 
It's thank incredible. You. Thank you're you welcome. very much. Appreciate you're, that. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, some of the other things that we have here. Yeah, so now it's it's a lot of different things. So over the years, I mean, we have the corned beef on raw, you know, your staples. This is the brisket we were talking about a little <laughs> earlier. So now these days we sell, you know, these wraps are very big, exactly. very popular. It's healthier, you know, less carbs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a grilled vegetable wrap. Uh, paninis are huge. So we'll make an Italian style hero in a panini and grill it. Okay, now you're bringing up another good point. Sure. So be obviously Bev and Jack worked at the store for how many years? I mean, 58? Up, I, up until maybe three, four years ago, he was still around at times. You know, mm -hmm. for the most part now, they're down the shore or in Florida. Exactly. But, uh, you know, he was in and out for 50 years, I would say. But 50. your involvement. Yeah, so you I. Went, you went to Johnson & Wales? I went to Johnson & Wales, but my my involvement and my brother Randy's involvement was even, even before that. When we were in high school, and even as I started in grammar school, mm -hmm. I went to room school. So the school started at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we would get up in the morning at 6 o'clock. We'd go, Morty would go to the fruit market in Newark at 6 in the morning. Oh, wow. So we'd go to the fruit market, come back, unload the trucks, you know, be at the register for a couple hours before school started, and then at 9 o'clock go to school. At 3 o'clock when we got out, we all, you know, family trained, family business. You come after school and you'd work till six. Mm -hmm. So I've been working there in from probably in 1975 when I was 10 years old. Okay. Doing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went to Johnson and Wales in 1983. Okay. Got out in 1985. And, and my understanding is you came back in with some more innovative. Well, that's when we really started getting away from the convenience and that old style where we started all prepared foods and catering and that coincided with you know women going back to work mm -hmm. we did a ton of catering off-premises stuff you know anything from weddings and we did uh, mm -hmm. you know we do repass uh, sweet 16s holiday parties and all that kind turkeys. of stuff I think you turkeys, did turkeys for Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. And, and Christmas okay. and all that stuff so we really you know at that time the Jewish holidays were a very big thing mm -hmm. we were doing you know the soups and all that and now, to this day, you know, most of our business now is, is catering. Okay. You know, off-premises catering and uh, especially with the nights. Now we have an on-premise, you exactly. know, facility uh, to do parties of from 40, you know, you could have a 10-person party up to 200. And, you know, anything from repass to reunions are big, you know, high school reunions, mm -hmm. weddings, sweet 16s, all kinds of things like that. Uh, we do with the Knights and it's been a, a great partnership there. Randy was able to make a deal with them about three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. Now that would have been when that project, when it, the project was completed. And mm -hmm. obviously, and anyone who remembers what that area well, looked yeah. like, I mean that they took out the, the building that was in Correct. the front. And I think we had a bowling alley in the it basement. It did have, and I bowled there. Yeah. Right. There was a bowling. I did too. You did? Yeah, I did. Okay. The yeah. bowling alley was in the basement. And then you had the building next door, which is now a condominium. Correct. And um, the partnership that the Knights had with you, your family, I guess, comes from a history of them knowing all about your catering. Yeah. And yeah. They, I mean, we've been partners, I guess, four years now, just about. And it's been very, very beneficial to both parties. And, you know, they did a unbelievably good job the the room is spectacular it's a beautiful room yeah all all three the bar the room upstairs and the main ballroom has just been great people mm -hmm. love it mm -hmm. uh you know and you know you could do any party any size party and any almost any price range you know start off very very, very inexpensive mm -hmm. and go more high end and mm -hmm. and it's whatever you really want so my understanding is though at over at the nights you um you have another family member who would be the person who I, I would go to and discuss. Right. With so that's Randy's mother-in-law. Randy's mother-in-law. Right. Okay. Uh, Sissy. Okay. And and she, you know, their family's been Sissy Burbrook. They've been in town forever. Mm -hmm. You know, and Sissy's husband Jack was a fire captain, so they're in town for many many years. Okay. And she's the person you would talk to her or Randy to you know arrange a party at the nights. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. So. And of course, we want to mention Jen. 
My sister? Ran of course, okay. Randy's wife. You can mention Jen. Okay, we'll yes. mention because her mom is the one who, right. you, if you were, were to go over to the nights, she would help you th work through Absolutely. the menus, the room. Do a tasting. The tasting. The, the whole oh, thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We could do anything. You could come, you know, Randy could set something up at the store where you can come by either way. Okay. So, you know, the business really morphed from this little mom and pop convenience kind mm -hmm. of business mm -hmm. into this catering business and now with the hall and you know he does everything from uh, office parties you know we do office lunches it could be breakfast lunch dinner yeah, you know Randy mentioned to me that you have some corporate accounts a lot of corporate stuff you know okay. that was a big uh, that was a very really really uh, a big area that hit in the 90s when Jersey City was starting to the get built up. The waterfront, yeah, of was course, a, the development of the waterfront. It was huge for us. Okay. Uh, we were, you know, doing feeding companies that had 200 people. We were feeding them lunch every day. Okay. You know, and we, you know, we'd still do a lot of stuff like that. Companies have, you know, people that, <clears throat> excuse me, can't get out, you know, mm -hmm. they don't want, it's more, it makes more sense for their to pay for their employees lunch mm -hmm. than to pay them the hour and let mm -hmm. them not be there. So we're bringing in lunch, breakfast, dinners. Breakfast too. Oh, absolutely. Hot, cold. You know, we have companies that have to be open Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. So they'll bring in food for their employees then. So mm -hmm. we could deliver that way. Uh, a new thing that's very popular now is in-home catering. So somebody will want to have a little dinner party. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do everything. So mm -hmm. we could do everything from bartenders, servers. Oh, okay. We could come and cook in the house. We could bring everything prepared and heat up in the house. Okay. So, so, you know, that's another option for people. Now, you're talking about, obviously, you're talking a lot about Bayonne, Jersey City. But do yes. you venture out? Yeah, I know, absolutely. I know that um, Randy, on occasion, has gone into Manhattan. A lot. And done some delivering in a Manhattan lot. as well. We've done down the shore. We've done in Connecticut. We've done in New York. Uh, yeah, the geography is, is wide open, whoever... Okay. People are hungry everywhere. Yes, and so they want good of, food everywhere. Exactly, so. it kind of doesn't matter. Um, we do w also want to mention that there are three sons, three Joskowitz boys. Mm -hmm. We have Scott here, Randy is watching what's going on over in the... Uh, over in the room, the uh, outside area, and we have Ian, who also manages the West Side Market in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Bev and Jack really provided you all with such a wealth of knowledge, experience, work ethic, um, work ethic, oh, which is something this this let's town. Let's talk about a work ethic. Uh, you didn't have much choice. But that's I love the, it. Say but that's, that again. <clears throat> that's the way it was. There it's was no choice. Because that's what they told you to do, and you did it. That's right. Okay. That's right. But that. But that's also this town. Mm -hmm. It was a good place to grow up. You know, it was working class people, and that's what you knew to do. And to mm -hmm. this day, it's it's something that's a challenge for people that like live in the suburbs like I live. Okay. Where it's not so easy to have your son go down and work at the family business. Mm -hmm. You know, when my nephew, who lives in town, who goes to school in Indiana, mm -hmm. is home, he's working for his father. So it's interesting to see how a kid who grows up that way who knows the value of a dollar mm -hmm. when he goes to spend money as opposed to when maybe my son who doesn't work, True. he doesn't realize, you know, my son, my son is buying and my nephew says, well, it doesn't grow money. on, it doesn't grow on no. trees. And I mean, when you come to realize a family business, what it instills in the Tremendous. family, you know, I mean, I can honestly say that there must have been mornings you didn't feel like getting out of bed nope. and going over to Newark to the That's fruit true. markets or doing the things you had to do. But in many instances, you know, the, the choice might not have been yours. Correct. But in, in the long run, seeing your parents sitting there yesterday, the two of them, yep. you know, happy and mm -hmm. retired and sitting in a business that's different than the business they started. Yes, very much so. Very different. But yet so much of what they brought has, has really withstood the, 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 the test of time. Think about it. You know, it's almost uh, 60 years. And think of how many businesses have come in and out of town. It's crazy. If you go down Broadway, the places that I remember, Penner Brothers and, and all these places are gone 20 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're still in business thriving. It, you know, it says something about the business and 
about our product, I think. And about the family, yeah, about the family. Yeah. The, uh, now, now, we can probably segue into the fact that even though your business is still here, it's not the same name it was initially. That's correct. Okay, let's talk about that. How did well, that happen? I, I think at the time we were going into the catering aspect more, mm -hmm. and Stop and Shop was synonymous with a market. Okay. In town from us, but also nationally, you know, the chain was really more in the Connecticut and Boston area. They weren't around here yet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we wanted to, the first impression for people to think of us was catering. Okay. And not more of a market. So back in, I guess, 95 or so, we yes. started uh, East Coast Catering. That's when the shift changed. Sh yes. The shift came. Correct. You okay. know, we put out, we took out a lot of the shelving yes. and the placement of, of products mm -hmm. and we put in a, a big industrial sized kitchen. Yes. Because, of the, you know, we were cooking for four or five hundred people a day out of there. So we put in a real top of the line uh, kitchen that's magnificent today that really, you know, is able to handle a lot of stuff. Now, now of course, we, we would have to bring up that in Bayonne, change does not come easily. Easily. Yeah, that's okay, right. Okay, so tell me if you can recall, did you have customers that came in and said, why are you doing this? Why? Uh, well, we had my father to overcome, which was, oh, was really? a major thing because, you know, he's an old school guy mm -hmm. and he knew he made a living this way. Exactly. And it was change, but, you know, some of, of surviving so long is adapting. You know, and Excellent. the competition was so much in town for the staples. You know, at one point there was ShopRite and that was Elmas State and it was Shelley's, mm -hmm. but there weren't so many choices. Now there's a ton of choices for even your, your coffee, your this, your that. If you don't have something that's a little different or unique, mm -hmm. you go away. Mm -hmm. So we felt at the time that you really needed to make it about you and something different. Mm -hmm. It's like when it's something is commoditized, it becomes anyone could get it. It's just So number. you must have seen, you saw this. You I and, think your, Randy and, and Randy and, I, and you yeah. saw this coming down the pipe. We did. And came to realize, listen, Dad and Mom, this is what we need to do if the business, family business is going to continue. Correct. Well, we also saw the people that were coming into the store and what they were buying. You know, they were getting less of the ammonia and the aluminum foil mm -hmm. and more of the chicken soup and the, uh, you know, the baked ziti and the meatballs. Mm -hmm. So you had to adapt to that. You know, exactly. you couldn't force the issue. People were just, they were going to the Sam's Clubs and the Walmarts. Costco. Costco. They you're all not, opened up. Exactly. You're not going to compete with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're not a convenience store. We weren't in the right spot for that. Mm -hmm. We were more of a destination like we are now. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you wanted to go there for the brisket sandwich or for the corned beef or for the, for the soups. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we didn't change, I don't know if we'd be here today. Because a lot of businesses aren't. You know, they just didn't adapt. Well, as someone who grew up in Bayonne, I mean, obviously, you, you know, the business community is always changing. Mm -hmm. When it comes to a decision to open up a business, you know, sometimes I'll be riding up and down Broadway, which is one of my favorite things to do. Right. You know, you can recollect what used to be there, but you also, you're also looking at it and thinking, well, I hope that guy really has, you know, mm -hmm. has, has a chance. Correct. But you, it has to be thought out. Mm -hmm. Exactly, you know, exactly what you're saying. And when I always say when I see the fluorescent oak tag in the window, I know they're in trouble. And we used to have that. So you did? We did, but it's been 20 years. Okay. All right. So you know, you, you get my drift. Absolutely. And honestly, for your location to have had a business that have, has thrived as much as it has, it's not the easiest place to park. No, I no, no. I have to be honest And it's you. gotten a little better okay. uh, uh, the last couple of years especially. Mm -hmm. But it was good and bad because you had the people in that area yep. that were locked into you. Mm -hmm. But it was harder. Now, it's not a big deal. There is more parking. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people there. You know, it just turns over, it seems, so that at lunchtime you could certainly stop by and there will be a spot. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, you know. That's, yeah, I slid that's, right in front yesterday for yeah, the party. Yeah. I couldn't even believe it. In a, in, and, I mean, it, the weather wasn't so great. And so. we had hundreds of people that stopped by yesterday. And if oh, you were I able was. to get a spot then. Oh, I was. Yeah, so that's, that's good to hear. No, it was. And, and the, the feeling of um, just being welcomed and just an old-fashioned mm -hmm. kind of feeling. You know, it, it, it really, it makes the food taste better, even yep. though the food Thank is you. delicious. 
what, what, which one of the specialties in your family do you like the best? Well, I, you know, you can never get a good corned beef sandwich like you can get here, okay. like at the store. That's always tough to get. Our soups are great. You know, we probably make 50 kind of soups, and everything is homemade. Okay, from and, start. and your menu changes daily. We okay, want to so talk the menu this. changes daily. Okay. Uh, We'd love to have people call up and we could send you a fax every day. Okay. And we run promotions where, you know, every day someone is getting a free lunch. So you put really? your name. Yeah. We, you put your name in, in the hopper and then every day the computer generates a name and it goes on there. And if it's your name, you get a free lunch. Interesting. So we have, you know, different kind of soups. There's always salads. There's sandwiches and hot stuff. And, you know, you could call up. You could fax. And everything gets delivered hot and on time. Now, I did call. I did call. To, and I spoke to a very, very nice young girl who answered the phone. And, and I think she's, is she, is she, I think she's. It usually, it could be, usually it's Randy or Johnny, but it Johnny. could be Toddy or one of the other girls, you know. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I think she could said been, she goes out with Randy's son. Is that I don't know about this. You don't know about yeah. this. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I shouldn't mention it either. But anyway, she was so helpful yeah. and, and so patient. Right. And, you know, it wasn't as though you were being rushed. I mean, right. It, it, and, and for anyone watching who has, doesn't know anything about your, your, uh, your place, they just really need to experience it and go in and, and understand yeah, and what I'm talking about. And everything's custom made and everything's cooked to order. So if you want something that's prepared a certain way and you don't want something on it, we do it. And do you like? Do you take into consider into consideration dietary restrictions? Sure, we and can things? do. Yes, you know, people don't eat meat. They don't, you know, they're vegetarians. We do things that you know mm -hmm. could feed someone without any meat or anything like that. That's no problem. And your hours of operation? Uh, six to six, okay. uh, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, six to three on Saturday, okay. and six to noon on Sunday. Okay. So it's seven days a week. Seven days a week. Seven you're days open. a week. Wow. Yeah. And for those seven days a week, you can always expect to find... Um, just about everything. Just about everything. You know, Sunday at 12, you, we're not cooking anymore. We know we're about to close, but okay. the grill's always on. Mm -hmm. You know, breakfast sandwiches mm -hmm. for every day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hot coffee, soups. What about, your mom, <clears throat> do you still do the noodle pudding? Your mom still do the noodle pudding. You do. You do. Mm -hmm. The still noodle do. pudding is excellent, I know. That's famous. That's been around had, forever. Your mom was telling me all about yep. the noodle pudding. That's another Hadassah uh, oh, cookbook really? thing. Oh, mm really? -hmm. From, that, from that cookbook. Mm -hmm. Now, these secret recipes, I guess, will be handed secret. down. Uh, yes, they will. They will. We okay. have, I have a couple of nephews that will be in the business one day, I'm sure. And okay. So well, the Joskowitz name will be around in town for a while. The Joskowitz are here to stay. Yes, I think so. Well, we're happy to hear that, and I'm thrilled that you were here. I appreciate I being here. I have to let everyone know that the uh, aroma that we're getting from this wonderful That's the corned beef, I think. You think it's the yeah, corned beef? Yeah, it's the corned beef. I have my eye on that brisket. Terrific. Yeah. Great. Well, listen, thank you once again. Great. And I hope we've covered everything. And I if we, we have. haven't, people can call you over at the... Yeah, uh, they could call the store at 201-437-2800. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, for catering especially, they could call Randy at 201 206-8279. Okay. And any time, you know, he's flexible, meeting for parties during the day, at night, at the nights, or at the... At How the much stuff. of a heads up do you need? Oh, okay. listen, we've done parties for a hundred, a day, but, you know, we found that a day before. Really? But, you know, availability is, is important. So the more time you have to let us know, the better shot it is we could accommodate you. Well, that's fabulous. Terrific. Well, listen, it's, it's really been a wonderful experience. It will get better because when we close out, of course, obviously, everyone here will have a sample of what we, yes, we, we have will. here on the tray. I look forward to uh, seeing you over at the uh, shop, will. also over at the Knights. Absolutely. And I encourage everyone to go over and see what old-time Bayonne tastes like in this wonderful new year. Happy New Year to everyone, and we'll see you again with another very interesting Bayonne story. Take care.